Hey everybody, Scott Pienta for HTV One here, and I'm here with Gretchen Driscoll. And Gretchen, hey, thank you very much Great for stopping here, here yeah. and I appreciate you coming out. And uh, you've got a long uh, tour going on right now right. through the 7th Congressional District. And uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. I mean, I know that you were a mayor of Saline, the first mm -hmm. female mayor of Saline, mm -hmm. and uh, you held that job for 14 years. Right. So why why are you running for the 7th Congressional District? Tell me a little bit why. Well, I'm, I, you know, I was mayor for 14 years. I worked um, with our federal representative over that time, and I worked with a Democrat and a Republican. It doesn't matter for me. I want to make sure we address the issues in the communities that are ha that are being affected by fe the federal government. And I think we have really bad representation right now. I actually have bipartisan support from the two previous congressmen. I was nonpartisan for 20 years. I just want to work to get the job done. I think a lot of people, I hear from a lot of people across the seventh that they're very concerned about how their costs are going up and they're not seeing the kind of income increases that you know, like prescription drugs. I am doing this tour. The seventh is seven counties from Monroe County all the way up to Coldwater and Eaton County. So it's quite a big area. Is, but, you know, yesterday area. morning I was at a coffee shop down in Dundee and the woman that served me coffee said she had lost a friend to, she couldn't afford a prescription drug. Her insurance company cut her off and her friend died. She said, She's 25, this young lady mm. that was talking to me. I mean, we have a crisis in our country and it's not being addressed by the folks in D.C. It's uh, our incumbent that's there. I, he hasn't been doing the work that I believe that needs to be done. And you talk about uh, Congressman Tim Wahlberg. Yes. Um, now, he's been in politics for 27 years, 10 years as congressman uh, for the 7th District. Yes. He's beaten five um, <clears throat> Democratic candidates. He's beaten you twice. Right. Uh, the last time he's beaten you, you lost 56, 54 to 46 percent to right. him. And we're talking about those counties. I mean, Hillsdale, Branch, and Lenaway, which we represent mm -hmm. for our channel here, uh, you know, 69.1% uh, to 30% you lost in Hillsdale County here. Tough, red, right. tough, conservative area here. Branch County, another very conservative area, 66 to 31, 33% uh, loss. And then in Lenaway, it was your closest margin with 55% of the mm -hmm. vote to 44% of the vote. Now, what are you trying to do to change, you know, that... There's a lot of there's a lot of Democrats and independents in Hillsdale and Branch County. I know we see them on post online. We see their views coming into our page. It, what what are you trying to change or sway them away from Tim Wahlberg, who's who's been in that that role for ten years, who continues to repeal against the Affordable Health Care Act, which you talk about right. that you want to do. Now he is for trying to lower prescription drugs. Um, he voted to, against, against the bill. Well, he voted against it the last time, but he wanted. No, he it. voted he, against uh, the bill uh, a month or two months ago. ago yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he's. So this is what I would tell people in this district. I have represented um, folks for I, as a local mayor. I worked with people from every background, and my goal. We all have very similar values, and you know, we were raised. I was raised in a military family. You have a responsibility to get back to your community and your country and to help others. And that there should be equal playing field for everybody. Everybody should have an opportunity to get ahead. When you work hard, you should be able to get ahead. That is just not happening out there. And there's so many burdens. So a great example is the you know health care and drug costs and mental health. Mm -hmm. We have so many people that are struggling with depression and anxiety and addiction. And you know, we've been talking about opioids for a long time. Mr. Wahlberg actually voted back when he you mentioned as a state legislature. He voted for drug immunity. So the ability for us to actually sue drug makers in Michigan is severely limited. He voted to allow that. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's always thinking, if you look at how he's actually voted on things, he's always voting for the corporate profits and, and he's not helping the people in the district. And my argument to the folks here in Hillsdale and Lenaway and Branch, actually across the district, if you think things are good for you right now and you like this, the way things are right now, you probably want to stay with a guy that you said was been in office for 10 years. I hear every day from people that are really worried about their future, their kids' future. I'm a grandma now. I'm worried about my grandbaby's future. Like, what's happening? Where are the good paying jobs? Not only that, but how about all the costs that you are incurring because of health care, of all the crises that's happening in health care? And, you know, I would just say Mr. Wahlberg says a lot of good stuff, right? He says, I'm, I'm, I support lowering prescription drugs. But when there's a bill to vote for to lower prescription drugs, did he vote for it? No, there's something wrong with it. 
well, how about voting for things? How about voting for things that actually improve the uh, livelihood of the people that live in this district? So I'm, I hear a lot of people that are really, really concerned about their future. Now, you talked about the Affordable Health Care Act a little bit that you want to help out with that. I mean, it's not a perfect system. It's not. It's got its flaws. And, and President Obama, when he enacted the, the Affordable Health Care Act, better known as the Obama. Uh, no, it was better Obamacare. than nothing. It's better it's than what right. we had before. It's better than nothing. But, we've got you know, we've got a lot more people on it here in Michigan. Um, I don't know if you heard the uh, news last week. Uh, we have over six hundred thousand people that went on the Medicaid expansion, and what that did, it provided people stability to have if they have a chronic disease to get their health care coverage so that they could go to work and that they could go to school and they could be contributors to our society. So just having minimum support to access health care and be, to be able to move ahead because I'm confident that everybody when given the opportunity wants to work to get ahead and be proud of you know being able to put food on the table for their families and, and do the work to make our communities stronger and healthier. So I think that, you know, my experience of working, I didn't ever ask somebody when I was mayor, I don't, I don't, I, I never asked somebody like, what's your party? Like where, you know, what's, what's important to you? What do you really care about? And most people care about having a good education system for their kids, safe streets, right? You know, get rid of the potholes, like invest right. in our infrastructure, yeah, yeah. you know, our roads. I worked really hard on rural high-speed internet because I've heard, heard from a lot of people that are really concerned about just being able to access the internet. Mm -hmm. That was one of the first things that came to my attention. I was in the state house for two terms, um, and one, that was one of the first things that came to my attention is that people, kids are unable to get online uh, because of lack of access to just further their education, the job opportunities that we're losing, and then of course medicine, telemedicine is that's a way to get more people access to the healthcare system. Now you've got four things that you on your on your platform. The affordable health care is one of them. Your jobs with higher wages is another thing that you're really pushing hard. The lowering prescription drugs and retirement. Tell me, you know, what are you trying to do well, with the retirement? So, um, again, I think you need to look at how people vote versus what they say. Because when you see the budgets that are coming out and the votes that have been taken by the incumbent, um, he's voted in the past to cut Social Security and Medicare funding. And there's budgets that have come out that have been passed by Republicans that are to cut Social Security. So saying one thing that you support Social Security and then doing something, I think people really need to make sure they see what people, you know, what's hap actually happening with our retirement. Personally, you know, I'm completely offended that the, you know, DC folks call Social Security an entitlement. It's not an entitlement, it's earned income, retirement income. And we all work to get to that point where we could have Social Security coverage and we should be protecting that. I've run into a lot of people, seniors that are really, really vulnerable and really scared that they're not gonna have enough money to live on, that they have to figure out that they can't afford to, to buy their prescription medication because they don't have enough Social Security income or their food, they have to like, like trade around and that's, you know, security and retirement should be something that we should be able to do for all of our seniors. Well, and I've seen that. I mean, my ex-wife has seen that as well, as far as she worked in a pharmacy while she was going through her getting her RN. And she'd see little old ladies worrying about writing their, 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 their prescription for their life-saving drug. Right. And then the repeat offender comes in for Oxycontin right. every day <clears throat> with a prescription and paid for and da 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 da. And, you know, maybe takes a couple pills for themselves, evidently, and sells the rest off or whatever right. they're doing. But, you know, it's that, that, that little old lady's panicking. How am I going to pay for this $600, $700? And it even goes back to my grandfather when, uh, before he got, I helped him get some VA money because he was a World War II veteran, that, you know, he was caught in that, that uh, they, they call it the donut hole in the Medicare. You know, he'd right. have, his prescriptions were so expensive for his Alzheimer's that, you know, he'd get caught in that donut hole and, and stuck and then had to wait. And so, you know, we've got to help right. those that really need And we really need to address it. the donut hole. That's a huge problem. And Alzheimer's, my, my mother had Alzheimer's. And uh, that's another place we should be putting more research dollars into Alzheimer's and the disease because that's a huge cost to our Medicare and Medicaid system because so many people end up going on Medicaid because, you know, Alzheimer's is such a long disease. Long, and, yeah. you know, and then there should be ability to age in place. I actually support um, a child care, or excuse me, a, a um, tax credit for people that take care of their family members at home. I think mm -hmm. that would help. So fundamentally, the challenge we have right now is we have limited income resources and then huge costs that continue to go up without the income going up. And so there should be some ways to either lower those costs or 
take some tax credits and help get things in balance again. Because what I hear all the time is that folks are very, they, they don't see a, an ability to get ahead. And they mm -hmm. feel there's a lot of obstacles to do that. And that's one of the biggest problems here in Hillsdale County is it's just such, a, you have the haves and have nots here in Hillsdale County. There's no real middle ground. It's, you know, very, in, in not so poor, poor, mm -hmm. but there's those that don't have a, a, a lot of extra dis, dispensable money. Right. And then you have those that do have disp disposable money and they can, they can, you know, they seem to control what goes on here in Hillsdale. And that's not fair to those that really need it at the bottom. Yeah. And well, well, you know, as mayor, I did a lot of work on economic development. I have an accounting background and uh, I did a lot, I worked in business for a long time. And I think that one of the things we need to be doing more of is supporting small businesses, mm -hmm. making sure, you know, really the key to a strong local economy is supporting your your local businesses because the money that you invest in your local business actually circulates within that economy versus if you put it in a business that's right. like, a, you know, court, it, it just disappear, it'll leave your economy. So right. I think people, we need to be really thoughtful as uh, consumers. That's something that I would definitely support in figuring out ways to help small businesses more. I'm very alarmed about the federal deficit that we have right yeah. now. And you know, that's the other thing that really offends me about our the incumbent because he made this big fuss about the deficit under our previous president, but now it's worse than ever. Our deficit is huge. And it's worse than it's ever been with a booming economy. Right. And usually when you have this supposed booming economy, which is a booming economy for, as you mentioned, certain folks, a lot of people are not feeling that booming mm -hmm. economy. But that's when you pay down the deficit. And instead, we've done this program that helps people that are already wealthy and at the same time put our country in an incredible level of debt. And, and that that's the legacy that we're leaving for the future generations that I'm also really, really concerned about. And that's exactly a great Because I am pretty conservative. I mean, I'm an accountant. My, do my father was Scottish. I was, <laughs> you know, my parents are actually depression era ki right. kids. And I was raised, you know, save your twisty ties and your rubber yep, bands yep, and yep. recycle everything. So I'm actually very financially conservative. And um, I did a lot of that work when I was mayor and local elected. And I know how to balance a budget. And it's, you know, you have to make choices and you have to, you know, local government has to stay within those lines, right. but for some reason at the state and federal level, they, they, they forgot about that, and that really upsets yeah. me too. Right. So that, that that's what. Was there anything else that you want to tell people? Well, I, you know, County, yeah, you mentioned that we are we are having a tour um, this weekend. Uh, we wanted to get to know as many people and hear about the mm -hmm. issues. I'd love to come back at another time and talk more mm -hmm. about what's happening here in Hillsdale. I'm here to be a partner mm -hmm. and really listen to people and try to impact their lives in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And I think that there should be a role of people in D.C. to represent you and all your neighbors and that we can do the work to help people when we identify. I've heard a lot of things and that's why we're doing this tour because I did run again, as you mentioned, and I do have like, I think drug care costs and like I said, mental health, um, depression is, and we actually have huge challenges with suicide. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going, our veterans, our farmers, it's mm -hmm. skyrocketing, it, it's really bad. So we, I think people, we could really be helpful and what we're trying to do is learn more from uh, having this tour this weekend and then we have a facebook page um anybody that wants to uh send us information or um we'd love to meet with people i'm i'm a uh, I believe in transparency and accountability fundamentally as i mentioned well earlier we, we i started televising our council meetings mm -hmm. as soon as i became mayor i think that we need a representative that's accountable to the people and that will show up and listen and then do the job and take action and not just talk about it which is what i think we have right now Right, and I and I agree. You know, like, and it's great that you're going on this tour. You're stopping around you, after you leave here. You're going over to Cavoni's, I believe. Yep, over to Coldwater. And I then think the Blue Cold Hat. Waters yep. and the Blue Hat. Yep, and then oh yeah, Cavoni's here. Yeah, Cavoni's right for here. lunch. Yeah, and then lunch, we yeah. were. And so it's seven counties, like I mentioned: Monroe, Lenaway, Hillsdale, Branch, uh, Jackson County, Eaton County, and then um, half of Washtenaw County. I was Mayor Selene, and then for a, a short while, a State House uh, representative, and so. Um, we're getting out in all the communities and getting to know people and you know want to make sure that I do a good job representing the people and putting the people's priorities first and this is your third time running what's gonna what's the magic sauce right now to, to, to well, boost you, to the you top? know it's a big district and it's hard it's a, a big district full of wonderful people a lot of small towns it's really it takes time to get to know people mm -hmm. you know we mentioned you mentioned a little bit earlier um, about um, how to 
inform people. You know, the, the, a lot of the papers are closing or shrinking like my insulin or newspaper closed. It's hard to get our message out to folks. So every time that I've run, I've gotten to know more people and I'm confident that, you know, I, I hear regularly that people are really frustrated and really worried about their future. And with this huge deficit that's looming over us and, you know, okay, they're saying that the economy's going great, but I have not heard, I've heard from a lot of people they are working more than one job you know, our teachers are really struggling to get, they're working, not only teaching, but working a side Second job. job. Some mm -hmm. are working, I heard the other day that, that some are having to work two jobs on top of being a teacher. Like, what happened to being able to earn a decent living? Yeah, you right. Know? I mean, so. we know some teachers here today. They work down here at the uh, finish line and, you know, on the weekends and they teach full time, yeah. you know, during the week, you know. I don't know about you, but jobs. teachers, my mentor after my parents, my number one mentor was a teacher. and. Teachers should, I think, be focused on educating our kids. Our mm -hmm. kids are our future. If we have kids that don't have, you know, a successful base to their, you know, to to get a good career and be able to move ahead. I mean, I'm I'm going to be in one of the old folks' homes. I'm going to be counting on <laughs> right. that generation to make our make country it, strong right. in our society yeah. and economy. And strong. I agree. I mean, my dad is a retired teacher. I uh, was taught special ed for years, and then my cousin, she's a teacher up at Northwest, uh, up in uh, Jackson. So I mean, you know, that's I know it, it's tough. It is tough for teachers. But you know, I want to thank you for coming down here. I know you've got to run. You've got a long schedule ahead. Yeah, of we you. do have a lot going on, but it's been great. I mean, I've got to meet some, see some old friends, but also meet a lot of new people and. I mean, if people like the status quo and how their life is right now, then I think they can continue to vote for the same guy that's been in there for a decade. But, you know, as far as, like I mentioned, the drug thing, he's taken money. I would, oh, the other thing that is part of my platform is campaign finance reform. Oh, okay. um, the, the incumbent's taken a lot of money from, you know, drugs and insurance companies. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think he's really uh, voted for them and not for us. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time to have somebody that really understands what's happening to us here on the ground that are working hard to get ahead. I was trying to think if I had so, something else here that I had to think. No, I think I got it. Okay, well, I really appreciate your time today. And everything. we'll let you know when we're back in the area. Right. But we do try to get, you know, moving through all the communities. And like I said, it's a big district. But I would be, it would be a great honor and privilege to represent the communities here that people are right. wonderful that I've met. And the, the Midwest work ethic is strong. And I'm confident that we can make sure that we get the job done for the folks here in the 7th. I appreciate your time. Well, that's all the time we have today. This is Scott Piana with Gretchen uh, Driscoll. Yep. I don't want to say Whitmer. I don't know why yeah, you want to say okay. it. It's so easy. You know, she's a governor. You want yeah. to say her name, well, too. An, it's an unusual name, Gretchen. Yeah, right. So, and I had yeah. you and yourself as well as the governor running. So, right. uh, Gretchen Driscoll here. She's going to be going around that area. But if you want to get more information, go to her Facebook page. You can also go to our website uh, or anything else that you want yeah, to do. Yeah, we love so. to hear. My, you know, my goal really is to learn and listen. I believe a strong representative, a strong leader is someone that listens listens more than talks. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that people give me an opportunity to understand what's happening in their communities. And I pledge to work hard and help people get ahead. Thank you very much for your time. We'll talk to you next time right here on HTV1.net. Great. Thank you.